Hi everybody, uh, this tutorial is about rational Bezier curves and I'm going to try to show you a simple way to think about them and work with them. I don't think you're going to need any more math knowledge than you needed for the previous video on the de Castelljo algorithm, but you might want to start with that uh, video first. So here's what we're talking about. This looks like your typical Bezier curve. We have a, some uh, control vertices and we have a control polygon connecting them and we draw a curve that somewhat fares the, that control polygon. But what's odd about this one and what ma makes it recognizable as a rational Bezier curve is that associated with each of these control vertices I have a weight value. And the idea of this weight value is if you change it to something else uh, the curve it has some influence on the curve. It changes shape a little bit. And what I've done is I've taken this uh, third control vertex and added a weight of 2 to it, and you, you saw the curve move toward it. Let me just put it back. And now I'll move it to, to 2 again, you'll see the curve move. Uh, the idea is if you change some of these weights, you, you can kind of use them, as a user, you can kind of use them as additional dials to tweak the shape of the curve. So here's a few points, though, about these weights. First of all, they can't be zero. You'll end up dividing by zero if you set it to zero. Secondly, you can actually have negative weights, but the effect of the negative weight is rather strange. So for the second, for this vertex here, I'll set the weight to minus one, and you see it has a rather profound effect on the curve. In fact, you can see it, almost, it, it looks like it repulsed the curve. Um, so nobody does that. We, bas we always say that the weights must be greater than zero. So i put that one back. Having all the weights the same, by the way, has no effect on the curve at all. It's actually the proportions of the weights to each other that matter. So if I set these all to two, We start off with a curve that's pretty much identical to the one, in fact, is identical geometry-wise, to the first curve where the weights were all one. Now, here's the big secret of rational Bezier curves. What you do is you take your plane, if you're going to work with 2D rational Bezier curves, and you put them in a particular uh, three-dimensional space. The trick to understanding rational Bezier curves is to think of them as projections of the usual polynomial Bezier curves from a higher dimensional space to our, the space that we're interested in, in this case the plane. So from a 3D space in this image to our 2D plane. If we're interested in Bezier's in the three-dimensional space, then we project them from a four-dimensional space onto that three-dimensional space. So if this is starting to sound like science fiction, uh, just just hang out with me for a little bit. I promise it's actually pretty easy. Now notice I said that 2D rational Bezier's are projection of, cur of curves from a particular three-dimensional space. And here's how we set that up. We'll call the extra dimension W. So over here you'll see the W axis. And we'll put our plane, we'll line our plane with the, uh, the plane W equals 1. So it's at a unit distance from the origin. Here's our origin down here. You see my cursor moving. We call this uh, the space in which we embed our space of interest. Let's, let's call this uh, the plane that we actually want to see the curves on, our, our space of interest. We'll call the space that, that, that uh, has W in it as well, this, the three-dimensional space in this case, the homogeneous space for our curve. Homogeneous, homogeneous space is actually a pretty good name uh, because in this space, W, our weight values, are just another coordinate. Uh, there's nothing special about W, and what we're actually going to do is compute curves in the homogeneous space with W as being just another coordinate. So here we go. Here's our, our curve way up here on top in, in the... Uh, homogeneous space. Notice it really is three dimensions. When I change the weights, 
I'll change the middle weight, say, to uh, back uh, to uh, one and a half. The 3D curve moves. The 2D control vertices don't move because they're projections. The curve in three-dimensional space changes, and also the curve in uh, two dimension and our two-dimensional space of interest changes. So I'll play around with that a little bit. Let's uh, let's move W1, the first uh, one, the uh, weight of the first point, the one in the the one right here, onto that plane. So we'll set his weight value to one, and you can kind of see that this thing is still a projection. So here's what it looks like when we actually. This might help you view the projection. Let's do this. So we'll move her, we move uh, these points around a little bit and see if you can visualize this. And uh, I'll do a little spin for you. So here's what we're going to do. This is all there really is to rational, uh, rational Bezier curves. If you want to compute a rational Bezier curve in the plane, you can compute a polynomial Bezier curve in the homogeneous space, and then you project it down into the space of the original space you started with, our space of interest. That's it. So if we're doing evaluation, we compute the homogeneous coordinates. We apply the de castell algorithm to compute whatever point we're interested in on the curve, just like we did in the previous video. And then we project the result. If we're trimming the curve, we trim it in the homogeneous space and then project the control vertices. If we're computing derivatives, we can compute derivatives in, in the homogeneous space and then project the derivative vectors. Even if we're doing uh, theory stuff, if we're creating new algorithms and formulas involving rational Bezier's, we'll still want to keep the, uh, this notion of uh, rational Bezier's being a projection of a three-dimensional Bezier onto a 2D space, or a 4D onto a 3D space, if you're in 3D. We'll want to keep that in the back of our minds, and in fact, it'll end up in the formulation of whatever we're working on. So this is fundamental. This is the key to... Uh, dealing with rational Bezier curves. So now let's talk about the projection. We'll start pretty easy. We'll imagine that we want to create a Bezier in a one-dimensional space, which may sound kind of ridiculous. It actually isn't because you can describe, for example, the path of a bead along a wire as a, uh, a one-dimensional Bezier. In fact, it can move back and forth around the wire at different speeds, depending on that busy. I don't want to get into that too much. What I really care about here is just the fact that we've got a one-dimensional space and we want to project a two-dimensional point onto it, and this is how we're going to do it. So our point we're going to call Q. And what we want, our projection is going to always be through the origin. So here's the origin. We're going to create a line between Q and the origin. And when it hits our one-dimensional space, we're going to call that P. That's our projection point. To get the coordinates of P in terms of the coordinates of Q, we'll just use uh, similar triangles. So here's a triangle I'm talking about. We can create, take Q and, and uh, orthogonally drop it onto the W-axis and, and then form a triangle with the origin. That's going to be similar to the triangle that we can form with, uh, with P doing the same thing. Those triangles are similar because all the angles are the same. If you remember from geometry, uh, the ratios of sides of similar triangles are equal, and the sides that we're going to be talking about are the coordinate sides. So this means that um, the x value of P, the distance from here to here, divided by the w value of p, the distance from the origin vertically up, is proportional to the x value of q, distance here to here, and the w value of q. So everything we know everything here already, but the, um, the, the x coordinate of p. So we know qx, we're given that. We know qw, 
again, I'm assuming we're given q in the first place, we know what pw is, it's 1, because p is by definition on the line w equals 1. So that means the homogeneous coordinates of p, because we're still thinking of p as being in this homogeneous space, uh, is qx over w, uh, qw, and then 1. Now, you're not going to be making too many one-dimensional Bezier curves, so let's move on to two dimensions. Here we are. We have some point Q in our homogeneous space, and we're, our space of interest, again, is the blue plane at W equals 1. And again, our job is to project Q onto P through a line that passes through the origin. So let's forget about the y-coordinates for a while and just think about these x-coordinates. So when I say that, what I mean is, let's just drop the point Q onto the xw plane. That's the same as kind of leaving y out of it. Uh, we'll do the same for p. We'll drop p onto the, the uh, xw plane. And when we do that, we have the same similar triangle situation. And the math, the arithmetic is just the same. We end up with px equaling qx divided by qw. We can do the same for y. We can forget about x for a second. We can drop it onto the yw plane. And again, by similar triangles, we get py is equal to qy over qw. So putting those together, we know our homogeneous coordinates of p. It's qx over qw, qy over qw, and of course the w value for p itself being on the w equals 1 plane is just 1. Now, it's the same in any dimension, number of dimensions you want. So in three dimensions, it's qx over qw, qy over qw, and qz over qw, and then 1, because we're talking about homogeneous coordinates still. In um, any number of spaces you want, any, sorry, any number of dimensions you want, it works out the same. I'm not going to try to draw this for you because I'd have to draw a four-dimensional homogeneous space, and that's pretty hard to do on the computer. So it's time to step back for a minute, though, because I'm spending a lot of time talking about how do you project points that you know in homogeneous space onto the plane or space of interest. But that isn't really what reality is. We kind of work the other way. We have points, control vertices, on our plane, and we want to compute stuff. And we don't really care. The user certainly doesn't care about homogeneous space. The homogeneous space is kind of an artifact to make things a little bit easier. So we don't get the Q's. What we're given is the P's. And typically we get the coordinates of P like this. We get for whatever, whatever index we want. PI is equal to the X, Y, and Z of that point. Maybe, there's a, maybe it's 2D, so maybe X and Y. And then we also get a W, a separate W for that point. Because that's what's on the space of interest. That's what's real to the user it then becomes our job to make our own homogeneous point out of it. And we do that just by multiplying through by w. And now we get our qi, the homogeneous point that's associated with pi and wi. Now that's mostly what I have to say about you. I want to add a few points about what you're going to see out there, both in the literature and in software packages. Um, typically, in file formats, you'll see one of two things. You'll either see your coordinates given, even for, for polynomial Bezier curves, you'll see homogeneous coordinates given. If it's polynomial, it's just that the w's are all 1. But you'll see four-dimensional values. You should assume that they're in this form, and that to get the, the projected version of the control points, you have to divide through by the w's. The other possibility is you might get the the projected control points, and you're supposed to build the homogeneous points for it. So to recap, when you want to work with rational Bezier curves, find your homogeneous points. Maybe they've already been given to you. But get your homogeneous control vertices, um, do all your math in homogeneous space, and then when you actually want to display those things, divide through by your, your W coordinates. It's actually that easy, and I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if there's something I can clarify, please leave a message in the comments and uh, ask, and I'll be happy to address it if I can, 
or maybe I can point you to some, some uh, discussion of it out on the web. Happy programming.